Hi, in this video, we're gonna talk about the formal definition of a derivative. Now, in a previous video, which I think is part two of the introduction using secant lines, we found that the derivative was the same thing as saying the limit of the slope of the secant lines. We're gonna define the derivative using this idea of a limit of slopes of secant lines. Now, before we move on, I just wanna do a quick demonstration of what I mean about a limit of a slope of secant lines. So I have these two points here, P and A. Now I wanna find the slope at P. All right, so ignore all this notation here in, in, these, in this terminology because we haven't done that yet. But this blue line right here actually shows me the slope at P, right? Can you see how actually as you approach P, that blue line is then the slope exactly at P. Now this red line is a secant line. And if I let A get closer and closer to P, my secant line slopes should get close to my uh, slope at that point P. Now notice what happens as A gets closer and closer. The red line, which let me uh, actually show you the slopes here. See, here's the slope again of tan, don't worry about tangent line. This is, means the slope at P is 0.33. Now the slope of the secant line is 1.02. Now notice what happens as my point A gets closer and closer to P. All right, notice that my secant line slope now 0.67. All right, getting even closer to P. Now it's at 0.42. And finally, when I get extremely close to P, these should be almost identical. So 0.35, pretty close to 0.33. Um, I don't think I can get any closer than that, can I? No. Okay, so that's as close as I can get. All right. So again, see the a limit of a secant line slopes is going to equal the slope at P. So let's go ahead and define now the derivative. Now there's two ways we typically define a derivative. I'm going to go over both because uh, certain problems are done better with one of the definitions. So let's take a look at this one, this side here. Now let's say I want to know the slope at that point right there. Right, I'm going to call that A. And I want to define a secant line. So let's go ahead and call, I guess we can call this x. This x. And so there's the point x, f of x. And this, this is the point A, F of A. Okay, so if I want to know the slope of the line connecting those two points, again, that was called our secant line, the slope of that secant line is going to be F of X minus F of A all over X minus A. What we found in the previous video as x gets closer and closer to a, we had a better estimate of this slope at that point, right? The, the actual slope at a. So what we did was we said, well, you know what? Let's take the limit as x approaches a. Because as x gets closer to a, I got a better estimate. Why don't I take a x, take the limit as x approaches a, and I'll, and I'll actually get the real slope. So right here, this is our first definition of a derivative. And we denote that by using the notation f. We have this little like apostrophe here that's called prime. We, we would say f prime. And that's going to equal this. And again, that's going to tell us the slope at a f of a. Now, another way of defining the derivative, and this way, uh, sometimes is better than the way we defined it here. Uh, we still have a, all right? So we still have that point, and we're still going to have this x value up here, and we're still going to find the slope of this secant line. Okay, but instead of using x, all right, because this is kind of like two different variables. We have a, and then we have x, two different x values. What we're going to do is we're going to actually define x as a plus h. So that means the distance from the x to a, that's a distance of h. 
Okay, so if this was one and this was four, then h would be three. So now we're just going to use, instead of x, f of x, we're going to use a plus h, f of a plus h. All right, let's go back to the slope again. The slope of that secant line will then be f of a plus h minus f of a all over a plus h minus a. Now, hopefully you see what's happening here with the bottom. We have an a right here, and then we have this a. So we have a minus a. So those actually cancel. And we're left with is that. We're left with f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now, as we over here, we saw that we got better estimates as x approaches a. Well, how does x approach a over here? That's the same thing as saying h approaches zero. So we're going to take the limit as h approaches zero. Because if you let h equal zero here, then all you get is a, right? a plus zero is a. All right, and we're going to use that notation for derivative, call it f prime of a equals this. So again, this is going to tell me the slopes at any given point on a graph. So in the next few videos, we're just going to do a bunch of examples using these two definitions.